Good morning and welcome to today's reflection on this cold and frosty morning. Today's reading is Matthew chapter 12 beginning at verse 1. At that time Jesus went through the cornfields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some ears of corn and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, he said, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. He answered, Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read in the law that the priests on the Sabbath duty in the temple desecrate the Sabbath and are yet innocent. I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the innocent, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Going on from that place, he went into their synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there looking for a reason to bring charges against Jesus, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? He said to them, If any of you have a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out and it was completely restored, just as sound as the other. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. Aware of this, Jesus withdrew from that place. A large crowd followed him and he healed all who were ill. He warned them not to tell others about him. This was what was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I have chosen, the one I love in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smouldering wick he will not snuff out till he has brought justice through to victory. In his name the nations will put their hope. And this is the word of the Lord. It must have been so very frustrating for Jesus to have to put up with the attitude of the Pharisees and other elders of the temple as they bring their nitpicky objections to Jesus' ministry. Instead of supporting him in God's work, they are wanting to bring him down to their size. It's not that Jesus objected to the way that the Jews obeyed the laws and regulations of their faith. Jesus himself followed those rules. Jesus himself would have avoided pork and shellfish for food. He would have devoted himself to prayer and worship on the Sabbath. He would have recited the correct prayers at mealtimes. Jesus was a practicing Jew, just like the Pharisees. But these self-righteous people wanted to make things as difficult as possible for the people they were responsible for and found Jesus' generosity of spirit quite unbearable. We can sometimes get a bit holier than thou about things. I'm old enough to remember the horror of some church people when a young man in his 20s came to church in shorts instead of trousers. And also when a teenage boy was told off in public for walking with his hands in his pockets in church. I thought, at the time, you will never see him again, vicar. And how about when an elderly chap sits at the back of the church, nervously wondering if he'll be accepted because of the smell of booze on his breath? Or a young woman with a difficult toddler and no one to help her? Jesus would have welcomed all these 
and would have instructed his followers to feed and clothe them, to befriend and love them, regardless of convention, regardless of status, regardless of our opinion. Jesus would have loved them with all his heart. Those Pharisees missed out on a great opportunity, an incredible opportunity in their lives, simply because of their pettiness and jealousy of Jesus' popularity. If they'd actually listened to his teaching, had appreciated his connection with his father, with God, his father, they would have embarked on the adventure of a lifetime. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward save that of knowing that we do thy will. Amen. So bye for now. Keep warm and safe and God bless.